In our last video, we learned about chiller efficiency. If the chiller efficiency is low, then the approach value of the chiller's evaporator and condenser should be checked. By using the approach value, we can identify the problem in the evaporator or condenser and solve the low efficiency problem by fixing it. I will explain this video in detail so that it is easy to understand. So please, do not skip anything. Let's see how to find approach value. Before we find the approach value, let's learn some basic things about heat transfer. This will be helpful for understanding this video. Let's take a tank with 50 liters of water. Let's also take another tank with 10 liters of water. Let's connect these two tanks with a pipe. Let's take two objects like that. One object is at 50 degrees Celsius and the other object is at 10 degrees Celsius. We no need to consider the temperature around the object. Now, let's open the valve on the pipe that connects the two tanks. Water will flow from the tank with 50 liters of water to the tank with 10 liters of water. In other words, water will flow from the tank with more water to the tank with less water. Similarly, when these objects are placed close together, heat is transferred from the object with the higher temperature to the object with the lower temperature. When there is more water in the water tank, the water flows faster. When the amount of water decreases, the water flow rate also decreases. Similarly, when the temperature difference is high, the heat transfer is faster. When the temperature difference decreases, the heat transfer rate also decreases. Water will flow from this tank to that tank, until the water in both tanks is equal. Once both tanks are equal, there will be no more water flow. Similarly, heat transfer will occur between these two objects, until their temperatures are equal. Once both are equal, there will be no more heat transfer. This is called thermal equilibrium. These are the basic things about heat transfer. Heat transfer occurs from an object with a high temperature to an object with a low temperature. When the temperature difference is high, the heat transfer is also high. And when the temperature difference is low, the heat transfer rate is also low. Once the temperatures of both objects are equal, there is no heat transfer. This is called thermal equilibrium. Let's see an example to understand the chiller approach concept easily. Let's take a tank with 50 liters of water. When the water level in the tank decreases, water is added from an external tap to maintain 50 liters of water. Therefore, the water level in this tank is constantly at 50 liters. Every 10 seconds, water is filled from this tank into a 25 liter tank. Now, let's find its approach value. Approach value is equal to water level in tank A minus water level in tank B. We mentioned that tank A constantly holds 50 liters of water and tank B is being filled with 25 liters. So, 50 minus 25 equals 25 liters. This is the normal approach value of this system. If the approach value of this system is 25 liters, then it means that the system is working correctly. If there is a blockage in the pipeline and the water flow is not proper, then instead of filling 25 liters of water in 10 seconds, only 15 liters of water will be filled. Now, let's find out its approach value. Tank A 50 liters minus tank B 15 liters equals 35 liters. So, if the approach value is higher than the normal approach value, it means that there is a problem in the system. This concept is also used to calculate the chiller approach value. First, let's calculate approach value in evaporator. There are coils inside the evaporator and the refrigerant flows around the coils. The water from the AHU enters the cooling coil. When it enters the cooling coil, the water temperature is 52.7 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature of the refrigerant surrounding the coil is 41.9 degrees Fahrenheit. 
As we mentioned earlier, heat is transferred from a high temperature object to a low temperature object. So, heat is transferred from the water in the coil to the refrigerant. After the heat transfer, the water comes out at 42.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, let's calculate its approach value. Its formula. Evaporator approach value equals chilled water leaving temperature minus refrigerant temperature. So, approach value equals chilled water leaving temperature 42.7 degrees Fahrenheit minus refrigerant temperature 41.9 degrees Fahrenheit equals 0 0.8 degrees Fahrenheit. An evaporator approach value below 3 degrees Fahrenheit indicates that heat transfer from the water to the refrigerant is happening well. If the approach value is higher than 3 degrees Fahrenheit, it means that heat transfer is not happening properly. If heat transfer is not happening properly, there could be a problem with the coil, such as scale formation. Additionally, a low refrigerant level or low water flow can also cause a high approach value. Now, let's find out approach value in the condenser. Once the heat from the water in the evaporator is transferred to the refrigerant, the refrigerant evaporates and enters into the condenser in vapor phase through the compressor. In the evaporator, the coils are all located at the bottom, whereas in the condenser, the coils are all located at the top. The water from the cooling tower enters this coil. When it enters, the water is at a temperature of 90.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Refrigerant that enters the condenser in a vapor state and at a high temperature must be cooled and converted back into a liquid. Only then, the refrigerant can be sent through the expansion valve and back to the evaporator. If the refrigerant is not properly cooled, it will remain in a vapor state in the condenser. This will increase the pressure in the condenser, which can lead to chiller surge. To convert the refrigerant from a vapor state to a liquid state, we need to cool the refrigerant below its saturation temperature. We have uploaded a video about saturation temperature. The link to the video is in the description. Those who are interested can watch the video and learn more about it. If the refrigerant is above its saturation temperature, it will be in a vapor state. If the refrigerant is below its saturation temperature, it will be in a liquid state. The saturation temperature of the refrigerant can be known through the display of the chiller. As we mentioned earlier, heat is transferred from the high temperature refrigerant to the low temperature water. This causes the temperature of the refrigerant to decrease and it changes from a vapor state to a liquid state. Since, the heat from the refrigerant is transferred to the water, the water leaves the condenser at a temperature of 99.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, the water goes to the cooling tower, where it is cooled, and then returns to the condenser. Now, let's calculate its approach value. Condenser approach value equals refrigerant saturation temperature minus condenser water leaving temperature. Approach value equals refrigerant saturation temperature 100.6 degrees Fahrenheit minus water leaving temperature 99.4 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 1.2 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the approach value of condenser. Condenser approach value should be below 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Scaling in evaporator and condenser coils can reduce the water flow and causes the less heat transfer, leading to higher approach values. Scaling is more likely to occur in condenser coils than in evaporator coils. There are many reasons for this. The temperature of the water and the minerals present in the condenser water are more likely to cause scaling to dissolve. When condenser water goes to the cooling tower, it comes into contact with open air, which can cause a lot of dust to form in the water, which can block the coils. This scaling and debris can all be removed through a chiller descaling process. I will upload an animated video in the future that shows how the descaling process works. The condenser needs to be descaled annually, while the evaporator requires descaling every two to three years.
This is the detailed video of chiller approach. If you have any doubts about this video, please ask in the comments section. If you liked the video, please like it and share it with anyone you think might find it useful. Please support our channel by joining our channel and becoming a member and by using super thanks. And don't forget to subscribe to our Zebra Learnings channel. Thank you.